right, so I'm going to give you a quick little overview of uh, the sensors that I have mounted on the engine. Um, six sensors uh, as of now that are for engine management. So I have uh, oil pressure, fuel pressure, oil temp, water temp, boost, and EGT. So um, all pretty easy to install on the Cummins. Uh, nothing, nothing elaborate, just regular old fittings. All right, so this temp gauge, uh, usually on an OEM Dodge application, is the oil pressure sensor. And that sensor is much like this one that's plastic um, with a little pigtail, and that is prone to crack. Um, so I had the one crack on the 80, even though it was unused, the sensor was there to block off the port. Um, and it started leaking on me, so I just used a regular old 1 8 NTP and plugged it. On this one, this is a solid, uh, solid sensor. So hopefully that doesn't leak. If not, I'll plug it. It's just oil temp, which most vehicles don't have, um, but I would like to monitor that. Um, then let's see, so I have, and then we'll move up to, this is fuel pressure. Um, the only addition is, is this little snubber here. I just had to take out this 12 millimeter banjo bolt, install the snubber, and then the fuel pressure sensor goes right on top. This is a Torx brand snubber. Um, and then also I have, this is the boost sensor, uh, right on top of the intake. And then I've, this one came with a pigtail, this one had a pigtail. Uh, this one was solid, so I created my own pigtail here, and then running everything on the driver's side, left hand side, through this into the body behind the dash. And then we move over to the right side, I have oil pressure right on here that's just went right in uh, on the 80 which is right here and let's see if you can see down there is right there I am using Toyota factory oil pressure sensor so another thing that just swaps right over um, EGT and I will show you um, how I tap that as well um, this one is a had to use a thermocoupler connection because this is a K type. So the wire that goes through this is I don't know some sort of special wire where any kind of connection you got to keep this the uh, type of metal there. So added the pigtail here, and that will go over here. And then last I have water temp, which is right here. This is exactly where I have my uh, water temp on the 80. Uh, only thing I don't like here is I actually, if you see, I had to, this is a three quarter inch to, I believe, quarter inch MPT and then eighth inch MPT. So what I need to do is find a quarter inch to one eighth so then I could take out that middle fitting. But uh, that would work anyway if I needed to. Alright, so I am about to uh, drill and tap for the EGT probe on the exhaust manifold. Uh, I got it off the engine, make it easy. Um, got it up here on the drill press. Uh, one thing to note on the Cummins exhaust manifold is it's a dual port. So if you're drilling on the vehicle, uh, you don't want to drill in the center where you think, oh, that'd be a perfect spot. You'll drill right into that wall. So uh, there's my center line for this side. I'm going to drill right at the end of the line um, I figure I'm going to put it on this side because the hottest exhaust is going to come from your back cylinders. Um, and then I'll get the better probe. Uh, on my 80 I have this on the downpipe which is a couple hundred degrees off from putting it here. So you'll get a better reading on the exhaust rather than post turbo on the downpipe. Uh, I had several options on the probe. The uh, thread pitch, so you have quarter NTP, I guess, uh, eighth inch NTP. Um, they did have a 10 millimeter by one, which I went with because that is another thing that's on Toyota. Uh, brake lines are 10 meter by one, and also your diff breather on the axle is the same pitch. So I have this, so if I ever, I know like the 40 series have the old, which is more of a, uh, it's not a fine spline, and they don't make that anymore. So what people do is they tap and use the updated ones on the axle. Um, 
So I figure, yeah, it's one more thing um, to have that's more Toyota based on the metric side than America using the standard system. So uh, I'm about to drill and we'll see how that goes. All right, so I drilled the hole. Um, I had it set up to film it, but then I forgot to hit record to show you how easy it is to go in there. Um, it just goes through like butter, um, not much effort. Uh, so this 10 by one millimeter, um, the tap, so this is a nine millimeter drill bit is what I used. Um, pretty common, got it on Amazon. It was a pack four for I think like 10 bucks. So I got four more for other things. All right, so now I have a manifold over here on the bench. Uh, got my tap here. And for lubricant, just whatever I have in the garage here. Got some PB Blaster lubricant. Kind of spray that. Just get some on there. Um, and then we'll go to town here. And there she goes through so I'll run that down here uh, let it go down just spin it free and there we go done all right so now getting ready to tap the old interweb said to obviously you don't want to use pipe thread sealant because of the heat probably won't last um, so they suggested most people I saw was using some anti-seize, high temp stuff. This stuff's rated to 1600 degrees. Put a little on threads there. Don't need too much on this one. Just, uh, uh, there we go. Get it all around there. And it should just thread in like butter. And it is, since it is a metric, uh, pitch it is a metric wrench 14 millimeter just like toyota intended for you to put a cummins in their truck and i really don't know how much to torque that down so i'm just kind of snug it up and for the probe compression fitting and Want that down right in the middle would be good and all right so just in case I put this on the vehicle and need to take it off and know my depth I am going to mark that right now and measure the depth on that uh, right now I have it right in the middle See if you can see here. You can see the probe, it's not focusing very well, but you get the gist of that. All right, so uh, you saw engine sensors. Now we'll go over and just do a quick peek at what I'm gonna do for the gauge cluster. Uh, I'm gonna do a separate video just on the gauge clusters because it's gonna be pretty in depth. Um, if you've been following along, uh, you know that this vehicle came with, I have no engine harness, no body harness, no nothing. So I am running complete new electrical myself for this whole build. All right, so here is the cluster. Um, this wood here is just for mock-up. I have a nice piece of aluminum that I think I'm gonna use. Um, gauges, these are Auber instruments out of, I believe, Georgia, US, and they are relatively cheap. I think each one of these costs like 50 bucks, and then you buy the sensor to match. Um, all these are the identical gauge and then you program them to whatever sensor you're using. So you can use these anything from, um, just your volt gauge to boost gauge to easy chi, uh, water temp, all that good stuff. Um, so this is going to be EGT, oil temp, water temp, boost, oil pressure, fuel pressure. And then um, I also have the little 
altimeter pod that's up here that you 70 guys know that's where i am going to put the fuel gauge and then two more of these for battery one and battery two for the volt gauges uh, right here i have ordered uh, speed hut gauges so it will be tachometer and then a gps speedometer that way i don't have to run any kind of cable down to the transfer case um, high beam left and or left and right um, signals and then i am going to run uh, three more down here for center diff um, rear diff front diff somewhere in that order and then i may add a few more if i have room oh another little cool trick with these things uh, so these are all digital of course but you can set warnings so you can have uh, and you'll see this when I run the actual video of this, um, how these things will work. Um, but they, you can set the warnings on them. Uh, I have started somewhat uh, the electrical. I got some 12 pin plugs off Amazon. Um, and I am already up to, I think I've used nine, nine spots in each of these so far. So I'm basically just kind of pigtailing the power to go all the way around but then you have each individual sensor it could be two to three wires um i'm still have to do all my high beams i can't remember if those are ground activated or um, 12 volt activated so i'm waiting on that to put them in here so that's about all the update i got right now a um, couple other little things that i got going on i sent the transmission off to the transmission rebuilder so I should have that in uh, probably a week or two, I imagine. And then I will drop off the adapter plate to uh, the machine shop probably this coming week and get that back. I think they're two, three week uh, time frame to get that done. So in the next month, I should have transmission transfer case adapter done. And then I can throw that in and actually mock up where my transmission cross member is going to be uh, i still haven't hacked off any mounts anywhere i'm kind of putting that off still i want to make sure i get all my electrical from the engine bay um, done so that way i'm not um, going over the fender it's nice and easy i can get to everything right now uh, try to keep it that way and I'm still not sure I want to get the radiator before I place the body, just in case I have to move the body even a half inch to gain clearance for the electric fan if needed. Uh, little things like that. All right, so that's all I got for you today. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Give me a like. Be ready for the next video. And once again, thanks for watching, guys. And I will see you all in the next one. Thanks.